everyone. You join me in a more unusual scenario today on Whiskey Wednesday um, with a very unusual whiskey to match it. So today we are talking about a Cashy 15. Now typically a Cashy you make blended whiskies um, and it's very unusual to see anything in excess of this age. Not only is it 15 years old, but it's also 58% alcohol. So we're talking about cash strength, quite rare Japanese whiskey. Not easy to come across. And I have to thank uh, a good colleague and a good friend of mine, Matt, who's lent me the bottle and a sample of the whiskey. Um, I've tried this in the past and it was very, very unusual. And there's quite a bit of history to cover with uh, Akashi, but we'll keep it as short as possible. Um, so it's based in a little village called Hyogo in the town of Akashi. And they were given a license to make whiskey in 1919. So a very, very long time ago. However, they didn't really start making whiskey until like 1984, I think it was. Um, even then, they only produce whiskey for two months of the year, so they don't make a lot of whiskey. What they do make isn't aged for a very long time, because they tend to release it around sort of three years old. Um, in Japan, you can buy their basic blend, which is actually a molasses spirit. So it's not actually able to be sold in the, in the EU, as it were, or not in the UK anyway. Whereas the one we get in the UK is a typical grain and malt distillate. So they make a different product altogether for us here. However, the 15-year-old has spent 12 and a half years in an old PX barrel and then two and a half years in a Canara cask, which is from the same tree family as Mizanara, so it's Japanese white oak. So typically it should be quite a spicy style. 15 years, 58% sherry and Mizanara influence. There's gonna be quite a lot going on. So let's have a little smell and tell you what's going on with it. It's oddly quite, it's not that smoky, but it reminds me a little bit of kind of those cast strength Port Charlotte bowls quite oily, it's got like a sea salt, sea breeze thing going on. It smells a little bit like kind of diesel and tar, it's got like an industrial quality to it. A little bit of sweet sherry comes through, but not a lot. What I do get is quite a lot of that Mizanara influence or that Canara influence. So it's kind of like a sandalwood and black pepper. It also reminds me a little bit of kind of olive oil. It's got this, as soon as you smell it, you kind of know it's, it's thick and it's very oily as a result of that. A little bit of sage. It's got a kind of savory pork meaty element to it as well. Okay, let's dig in. So it's 58%. I've not added any water as we normally don't in these channels. So we'll just see what it's like as it is. That is not very Japanese at all. Um, you could mistake that for cash strength space side. But with just loads and loads and loads of little tiny things going on all over the place. The first time I've tried this, it was after a night out with Matt and another one of our friends, Rob. Went back to Matt's flat, he cracked this open, he let us try it. At the time, I remember it, it felt like it was tearing taste buds out of my tongue because it was that spicy. Um, now I'm a bit more accustomed to it, that was like two or three years ago, it was a very long time ago indeed. Now my palate's developed a little bit more. Um, given it's 58%, it's actually quite easy going. It's very, very easy to drink. And it's just, every single one of these little subtle flavours is really rich qualities to it. So it's got like a, a black truffle quality to it, it's got a slightly kind of starchy quality to it, which reminds me of pasta. I know that's a weird taste, but it does taste a little bit like starch. And then you get that kind of, that sage leaf, that kind of crispy pork belly note. All accompanied by that really lovely, thick, sweet PX. Kind of guiding around your mouth. And then as that sweetness begins to die off, hints of black pepper, hints of white pepper, a bit of cayenne, kind of exotic southern american spices along with these really intense kind of east asian spices too very unusual very different altogether the finish has a nice bit of heat to it it's like a warming chili heat it's not unmanageable it's just enough to kind of balance everything out with the sweetness with the savoriness it's just a nice finish towards the end that is arguably one of the most well balanced styles that i've 
ever come across from a distillery that doesn't make a lot of whiskey and what they do make now is on average like you know, three to five years old so trying to find this is not easy um i believe matt bought like some of the own six of some of the only bottles of it in the country and he was kind enough to share it with me on two occasions which is genuinely remarkably generous of him so there's a little nod to you matt um in terms of scoring this whiskey it's quite difficult it's one of the rarest things I've ever tried. It's one of the most unusual cast selections that I've tried. And it's from a distillery that I'll probably never really get to try anything this old from again. Um, but if you take that rarity out of factor and base everything purely on flavour, <coughs> like that's a good nine. It is very, very, very good. Balance, discretion, elements of robust, big, bold flavours, and these tiny little flicks of subtle, rich, over-the-top styles. Yeah, I catch you 15, 9 out of 10. Um, so thank you for joining me by the fireplace this morning. Uh, I've been Phil, this is the whiskey jar from a different angle, and this is a Cashy 15. Solid, 9 out of 10. If you can find it for a good price, I recommend buying it. Um, but yeah, let me know if any of you have tried this, because I doubt we'll ever get to try or sample this on this channel ever again. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you all next week. Cheers.